Yo, what's good guys? In this video, I wanna take you through the process of creating this music video I just did for my homie Jay Wills, if you know, you know. And if you haven't checked out the music video, you can pause this, feel free to go check out the music video or you can watch the after, whichever you prefer. <laughs> Uh, there'll just be a lot of context to what I'm saying if you watch the music video beforehand. I want to take you through the entire process. So I want to briefly talk about prep. I want to talk about production. I want to talk about uh, promotion. I want to talk about post, editing, workflow, coloring, all this stuff. So it's going to be a fairly long video. This video here is sponsored by Canva. So we're going to talk about promotion first. These dope previews that you see from this music video, I created all on Canva super fast. Canva has pre-built design templates for videos, for photos, for Instagram animated posts. And I use it in this way. I take out a little small portion from my music video and a couple frames that I like, and I just import them straight into a design template from Canva. And I come out with these incredible music video promotion templates to help my client get more eyes on their project. Now, aside from these templates that I use, Canva also has tons of design templates for flyers for YouTube banners, for YouTube thumbnails, for animated Instagram posts, for story posts. You can create media kits to help pitch projects to potential clients. It's so many things that you can do on the Canva platform. And Canva is completely free. You can use it right now for free, but you really unlock the true potential of Canva when you sign up for a pro subscription. You get access to a lot of stock photos, a lot of stock audio files. It's just incredible and it offers a lot more on the pro side of things. So down in the description is gonna be a link to take you over to Canva. And with my link, you get an extended 45 day trial of the Canva Pro so you can try it out. And you will realize that Canva is almost a necessity and it makes the process of designing and creating promotions so easy. Now with this music video, and just music videos in general, my process to preparation is pretty much always the same. I listen through to the song a bunch of times and then I just write down every single standout line that just hits me and it makes me think of certain ideas and ways that I can use these lines and implement them into the music video. So that's exactly what I did with this one. I went through and I wrote down every single standout bar for me um, and these kind of just spark certain ideas for me. You know, oh, I really feel it. They waiting on me. Came through and that so fast. You know, these sort of things like this just help spark certain ideas. And it helps me know where to go look for certain music videos for inspiration that I might want to, you know, check out and kind of borrow some things from. So these standout bars just spark these random ideas for me. You know, I wanted to do a curtain setup where I wanted to have like a hallway that I made from curtains. I wrote this down a long time ago, but I could never really find a reference image of what I wanted to do. Ironically, I did find one that I'm gonna show you in a second. Um, the POV bottle, you know, this frame right here that I took from this video, I got that from the, oh, I really feel it line. Um, the gas station photo burst, I just wanted to add like almost a sense of randomness, but he was talking about, uh, you know, I gotta eat that looking like some fried chicken. That made me think like, oh, he could be in the gas station, eat some chicken and I'll get some cool photo bursts of him throughout that. So, uh, you know, I just write down the standout bars and then I write down the random ideas I get. And then from there I reflect and, you know, try to narrow that into the actual concept for the video. The next thing I do is I watch a lot of music videos and I try to take certain frame inspirations and certain, uh, aspects that I want to implement into my video. Now, my frame inspiration can be for a lot of different things. It could be for color, it could be for composition, it can be for uh, effect, or it could be for wardrobe. There's so many different elements that you can pull from frame inspiration. But I just like to go to the director's work who I really like. I really love what the guys over at Blank Square Productions are doing. Uh, I've been a fan of Colin Tilly for a long time, Jacob Owens. All these people are certain uh, directors that I go to I check out their work and I try to figure out and look at their work and, uh, you know, pull certain frame and inspirations, uh, frames and inspirations from their work. So this is what I did here. So these are a couple frames that I pulled from some of my favorite directors and, you know, music videos that I liked. And I tried to pull frames that kind of match the random ideas that I threw out there. So if you look at this one, you know, this is the POV shot of uh, the person drinking. And uh, for this one, I really, really, really liked the way the lighting was and the colors was in this one. And I like this one right here as well. I'm like, oh, this is a really unique angle. You don't really see the top down angle like that in music videos anymore. And with this one, when I saw it, I was like, okay, this is kind of similar to what I want to do with creating the fabric hallway that I talked about. And this is just cool. 
I, you know, everybody knows the humble effect, the the, the effect from the the Kendrick Lamar humble music video. So I'm like, man, let me let me try this out. You know, I want to I want to I want to mess around with green screen as well. So I pulled that frame. And then one thing that I absolutely loved about this frame from this uh, this this future video that Colin Tilly did was the model in the background. Look at like you look at her eyes and you see how bright this thing is in our eyes and it's so polarized. And I'm like, okay, I want something like that. Um, and you'll and you'll see where I pulled, you know, certain things from these these this, these frames inspiration as well. Once we get further into this, uh, and I really like the lighting on this. And then one night I was just watching music videos with my family, and this old Beyonce video came on. And this is exactly what I wanted to do. So I had to pull that instantly. I had to pull that as soon as I saw it. So I go through, I get my frame inspirations, and then it's time for me to actually find certain items that I need to get for the music video. So with the ideas that I wrote down and what I knew I wanted to do, I needed to get fabric. I needed to figure out how to create this scene that was similar to this Beyonce frame. So I hit up a couple of my local fabric stores and I went to one. And when I got there, I was amazed because it was an entire warehouse and it had a bunch of different colors and flavors and uh, materials of, of different fabrics. But I knew I wanted something that had a, sh a little bit of shine to it. When you're lighting small spaces, you want to create depth. So with shine, you can have, you know, the light hitting certain aspects of the fabric and it will create the light and it will create the shadow. So I knew I needed something that shine. So I just went with this blue one. I told them what I wanted to do and I gave them the measurements that I needed for it. I told them I wanted it to be 12 foot tall, 12 feet tall. And I told them how wide I wanted it to be, but they didn't do any of the manual labor for me. <laughs> I had to go home and I had to cut up all of this fabric into 12 foot pieces and fold it up and bring it to set and figure out how I was gonna get it up and make it into a scene. And we'll, you'll, you'll see how that comes together when we get to production, but that's how the fabric scene came together. Now, another thing that I knew I wanted to get for the video was in my standout bars, I wrote down, get it wetty like umbrellas. So I knew I wanted to have an umbrella in one of the scenes. I just knew it would be cool. Now, I knew that an umbrella is problematic in a sense that if you're lighting something from the back, then the light's not gonna shine through the umbrella. So I decided to get a clear one, which went on Amazon and got a clear one because I knew a clear umbrella wouldn't disturb lighting at all. But it would also add like a cool prop for the music video. So I got the clear umbrella. This standout frame from the future video, I was trying to figure out how I could get something that was bright and polarized and something that would be a focal point of a scene. So I went on Amazon and I found these LED glasses. Super sick, man super sick super unique i've never seen anything like these personally and when i saw them i had to get them they have exposed led light panels on them and they're incredible but i did have a problem with them which we'll see when we get later into the video once we get to the production side of things so once i get my items it's time to do shot listing now shot listing for me is very loose but it keeps me updated and organized while i'm on set when i create my shot list i like to write down a brief idea of how I plan, up set, I plan on setting up the lighting. And I also have to write down every single piece of equipment that I would need to make this scene work. And you'll see later on when I create my production list, how this helps me. So I write down my guesstimated lighting setup with the equipment and the actual setup. Here you can see left side key, back right side kicker light. And this is, you know, just simple terminology that I can understand when I look at it. And then from here, I like to write down simple angles and shots that I know for sure I want to get. With Wills on the green screen set, I knew I needed multiple takes of him just standing there and bopping because I was going to have to duplicate him in post. And we'll see that when we get to the, the post-production side of things. I knew I was going to need a performance of him uh, performing. And I also knew I wanted to get shots of him kind of just saying this ad lib at the end because it's so loud and it's something that, you know, it kind of it registers with you when you hear it, so you want to see it being represented in the music video. I took out the standout line here, Andre the Giant, because I wanted to do like a cool green screen effect with it. And I also knew I wanted some clean takes as well. From here, I write down every single piece of equipment that I know I need to make this happen. And this is how I go through every single one of my scenes. I do the exact same thing. Write down the lighting setup, write down the shots. And then on my phone, while I'm on set shooting these things, I'm able to check them off as I go and I'm not sitting on set scrambling, wondering what's next. I know exactly what I need to do next. So after I do my shot listing, I like to create a production list as well. 
Now the gear checklist and the production list just helps me when it's time for me to go to the scene, when it's time for me to go to the music video. I take every single piece of equipment that I wrote down that I needed for these scenes, and then I put it into the gear checklist. And then when I'm packing the car, I can check this off and this ensures that I don't miss anything and I don't forget anything when it's time for me to go shoot the music video. So that's shot listing. That's how shot listing helps me a ton. First is a green screen set. Now for the green screen set, this is my first time ever using green screen. But through my brief research on using green screen, the main thing that I heard was make sure that you light the green screen and you light it evenly. That way when you get in post and it's time for you to key out the background, it's easy. So that's basically what I focused on. At the studio, they already have LED panels aligned over the green screen. So we turn those on to make sure it's evenly lit. And then I pull wheels from the background just enough so we don't get any green spill on him because that can also be a problem when it's time to key. So for lighting him, I use the Aperture 120D Mark II with the light dome on it. And then I use the Aperture 300X off to the right, just behind him as a kicker. We change the temperature of that to something warmer, like 3200 Kelvin, just to get that warm kick. And this helps separate him from the background as well. So when we got in post and it was time to key, it was super easy to do because he was lit really good. Now for the gear that we used, I used the Canon C200 and I also used the Canon 50 millimeter F1.2. Uh, I only used two lenses throughout this entire music video and that's one of them. And then I'll tell you about the other one when it gets time for me to use it. For this scene, just put it on a tripod. I filmed a bunch of different takes of him bopping, interacting with the song, some of him performing that way when it came for me to duplicate him in post. I had enough takes of him that if I had to even duplicate those takes, it wouldn't look like I duplicated one clip. I got some clean takes of him wide using a Sigma 24 millimeter F1.4 R lens. And then I also got a clean take of him on the tripod with the 50 millimeter. And I shot that one with movement, how I would actually shoot a music video. And I just went with the tempo of the song. And I knew that I wanted to get a clean take as well. That way, if something happened where I didn't necessarily like the multiplication take, I would have that as a backup reference. And it actually came in clutch in the actual music video. And I'll talk about that when I get to post. The next scene is the fabric hallway scene. This was the scene that I was most excited about, but also a little bit scared because I didn't know how I was gonna set it up. So like I said, I cut out these long pieces of fabric and getting to the studio was just time for me to figure out how we were gonna put it up. Now my original idea was that we could just clamp the fabric to backdrop stands that you put backdrop rolls on, but they weren't long enough. And we had enough. I brought mine in, C. Ron brought his in, and I was going to rent two from the studio. But they were like, yo, we have these 10 foot frames that you can put that you put diffusion on, but you can just take one side off and put it onto a C stand. So we ended up using those. So we had three of those. And then we ended up just clamping the fabric to these frames and we layered them up so they have like a nice drape on them and they don't look flat. We just put it into the scene. We have one on the left, uh, one on the right, one on the left and one in the back. Uh, it was actually really simple. I was kind of shook because I didn't know how it was gonna look or how it was gonna turn out, but it actually turned out really well. It turned out better than uh, I expected and actually looked very similar to this Beyonce video, was I, which I wasn't sure that I was gonna be able to do. Lighting for the scene, we used the Aperture 120D Mark II off to the left with the light dome on it, and that's shining in on wheels. We put a grid on it to kind of focus that light in on him because I didn't want it to be super wide. We tried it without it, and the scene just looked flat. It didn't look dynamic at all, so we ended up putting on the grid. And then the back hair light for him, we have the 300X just really tall on the light stand up above the fabric shooting down on him, and we have the paparazzi effect on that, and that's flashing and helping separate him from the background. Then right off of frame to the right side, we have the Nova uh, P300 and we have the paparazzi effect on that one as well, but we just have the intensity a little bit lower so the flash isn't uh, super jarring to look at. Canon C200, 50 millimeter for the majority of these shots and then for some of the slow shutter effects that you see throughout some of the transition scenes in the music video. I filmed those on the 24 millimeter, got in close, turned uh, my shutter angle way up. and. That's the gist of the shot. Another thing that we added to the shot to give it that flare and that pop a little bit more is a fan. In the Beyonce video, I saw them, the fabric was just waving. 
And I'm like, I want to try that. I didn't even have that idea until I saw it. When I saw it, I'm like, I have to. That just adds so much more interest to this to the scene. So right off the frame at the bottom, I got my homie Kosh with a fan. Shout out to him. Shout out to C. Ryan, who owed me a ton. Uh, shout out to Paulus, who did a lot of great work on this music video. My guys, links down in the description. Make sure you guys check them out. He's holding down a fan, and he's just moving uh, the fan left and right throughout the scene. And it's helping move these fabric pieces uh, and wave them. And behind the fabric pieces, we have those clamped together so it doesn't pop open wide and you see the entire background behind it. So that's how we set up the fabric scene. It turned out incredible. And I did not think that it was gonna get there or look anything as good as that. Now with the dancer scene, the lighting is the same as all of the other lighting in this music video. If you pay attention to it, the philosophy on the lighting for this music video, every single one of these scenes is exactly the same. It's just a key light off around like 45 degrees to the side and then it's a kicker light in the back. <laughs> it's no different with this one. So for the kicker light on this one, same 300X in the back with the Fresnel on it. And then the key light is the 120D with the light dome. Now the difference between this scene and the other ones is that the key light is a little bit dimmer. And this is because the glasses were supposed to be the focal point of the shot. You have these bright glasses that are doing these effects. You don't want to have the scene super bright because it's going to take away from the glasses. So I wanted to key light them a little bit dimmer. Now, the problem with this was when I bought the two pair of glasses, I had the glasses for a week before the video. And this is my fault. And don't ever do this. This is my fault. I bought two pair of glasses and I had them an entire week before the shoot, but I didn't take them out the box and play with them until the night before. But when I did, I only did one. So I took one pair out of the box. I charged it, I played with it, I make sure I knew exactly how the glasses work. From that, I put both of the glasses on the charge, I went to sleep. When I wake up to go to the shoot the next day, I go to test out the other pair of glasses, it doesn't work. It was supposed to be the model with the glasses on and wheels, and we were supposed to have this dark, dim lit scene. It was supposed to give you like techno, like DJ vibes, it was supposed to be crazy, but one of the pairs of glasses didn't work. So this is the philosophy behind the lighting on this. This is why the key light is a little bit dimmer because it was supposed to be the focal. Uh, the glasses were supposed to be the focal of the scene. Throughout the music video, you see some really cool transitional effects and some transitional photos of Will's just out of the gas station. He goes in, he picks up a drink. He walks out of the gas station, he's drinking. You know, it's some cool photo burst moments as well in the studio. And this is just me using a DSLR and just high continuous burst mode in photos. And I'll talk about how we put that together in post when we get to the post-production side of things. The Riker scene, same philosophy on lighting, but we did use something that was a little bit different. I decided to use an eight by eight frame to light this scene because I wanted to ensure that I was lighting the entire scene and not just him. When you have a smaller light source, it's hard for you to light bigger spaces. So I decided to get that eight by eight frame. On the eight by eight frame, we just have a sheet of diffusion and I'm shining the Aperture 300X through that. Uh, and that bigger source of diffusion is just helping us light the entire scene and making sure the Riker is nicely lit. And it doesn't look out of place in the scene because the scene already has lighting as well. For the kicker, we have the 120D with the Fresnel on the back, shooting just to help separate Wills from the background. And it's the same camera setup, C200, 50 millimeter. I shot some shots on the tripod. And then I also got up in a chair and did a handheld shot of me looking down on him. And that's the gist of it. That's the, that's the production side of things. That's how the production went. So let's talk about the, the green screen stuff first and foremost. Now this is, this is the finalized shot. Now when you look at this, it just draws your eyes right here into this plane of him performing. And this is by design. Everything that I did to the process, processing of this scene is what makes your eyes instantly draw into him right here in the middle. And I'll talk about that. So this is a compound clip. If I go into my compound clip, you can see I have all of these clips stacked on top of each other. So I basically went through and I keyed out the background. I just stacked all these clips on top of each other. From there, I placed them exactly where I wanted them to be in the frame. And then I added a couple different elements to help this layer, help sell this layer depth. If you were actually filming a crowd of people it would be layered. So the people in the foreground would be a little bit blurred. The people in the background would gradually get more blurred out. And this is what I did by just using uh, a focus blur effect. So I blurred these people out in the front a little bit, and then I gradually increased the amount of blur the further I went back. 
um, in the layers in the scene. So you can see that right there. And then another thing that I did to help sell this effect after I put my color grade on was I added another layer of focus. If I turn it off, you can see, you know, everybody's a little bit more focused. And this doesn't look bad, but this just helps sell it and helps it make it a little bit more realistic to help us draw our eyes right there to that point. And I also put on a layer uh, of, of almost a vignette as well. So if I click on this layer, you can see this little square and everything outside of this square is just the, the exposure is just turned down just a tad bit. Not a lot, but not a lot that you would notice it. But if I turn it off, you can see, oh, everything's bright. You know, you don't really know where to look. But if I put this layer on, it just helps you focus in and hone in on that one plane. So those are the things that I did to help really sell that with the group green screen effect. Now, another thing I wanna talk about is this green screen effect here on Wills uh, that looked really cool. You can see we have the cool little echoes behind him. And this was actually really simple to do. So the first thing that I did was I just keyed out Wills, right? So this is just a simple key of Wills. This is me just taking off the green screen in the background. I duplicated this layer and put it behind him. But then when I duplicated it, I put on a trails effect. So trails is what gives us, you know, those multiples of him. And in Final Cut, it's called trails. I think in Premiere, it's called echo. You can get a similar effect to this. So it's super simple. And then I put a layer, uh, a clip of thunder behind him that I got from Storyblocks. And I just, you know, looks cool. And then from there, you know, I just black or whited everything, threw that extra grain and that extra texture and that uh, dirt to it to give it that uh, that gritty vibe for it. So the next thing I wanna talk about is, you know, some of the overlays. If you look through the video, you'll see like, you know, some cool overlays throughout it to help us transition from place to place. This is my new film aesthetics pack that I just dropped. If interested, it's linked down in the description. You can use code YTFAM. I think that's what it is to get 10% off. If you haven't picked it up, I just did a major sell over the weekend. So if you pick them up, use them, make sure to tag me on Instagram. I would love to see what you guys make with them. But these are just my film burns. I set my my blending mode to uh, to difference. And I also put on a color wheels layer to take the color out of it. I wanted it to be black and white because a lot of this music video is black and white. But if I would have left my color in, you can see right there, the color would have, you know, colored through. And that doesn't look bad either, but I just wanted to get that black and white vibe for it. Throughout the video, you see a lot of these cool photo burst effects right here that you can, you know, see. And this was basically me just taking a bunch of photos on set. And then what I did was I just layered these photos in the timeline and I kept each one of them going for two frames. So if you drop a photo into your timeline, you go two frames and then you drop in the next one and it just gives that, you know, that little stutter effect that you see. Then from here, I just added the exact same effects that I put on my black and white layers here with the grain and stuff. And then I ended up duplicating the layer, zooming it in, and then I put a shape mask over top to give it that little uh, rectangle right over the top. And that's it. All you gotta do is layer photos in the timeline and just, you know, stick them for two frames and then you'll get that, uh, that photo burst effect. A lot of this grade is pretty much the same. I'll take you through like maybe one or two and then you'll get the gist of the grade. So what I'll do to show you the grade is I wanna show you, I guess, layer by layer what I did. Now I'm using Color Finale Pro to color grade and Final Cut Pro 10. I go from this to the regular color editing tools all the time. Sometimes I'm all for Color Finale, sometimes I freaking hate it, but I decided to use it for this music video. So I just wanna take you through the layers. So these are all my layers that I use to get this color. This is straight out of camera, just with a conversion light on it. First layer that we add is just for contrast, just to get us to a good point in the tones. The next layer is our color. Now, in order for me to achieve this, you can see in the color wheels, it's super simple. I'm just adding blue tones to the shadows and I'm just adding warm tones to the highlights. So that's our color right there. It's gonna give us our blue and our warms. Next thing I did is add in a con uh, contrast curve. And this is just to bring our exposure down. I felt like Wills is coming in a little bit too hot in the scene. And then we just add in our six vectors. The six vectors uh, is just shifting our blue tones a little bit. And it's also shifting our purple tones as well in the scene. If I turn that off and turn it on, you really won't even see the difference because I think I copied and pasted this color grade from the scene inside of the studio. So I don't even think this, this layer is relevant to this. The next one that I used, Ah, people always fly by my house. <laughs> the next layer that I used is help to focus our eye in on to wheels. So you can see without it, 
doesn't look bad, looks cool, but when we drop it in and we drop it on him, it helps just center our eyes and focus our eyes on him. If I click on it, you can see it's just a circle around him. And then on the color wheels layer, it's just me dropping down um, the highlights down a little bit as well. For the blue scene, these are my layers. I'm gonna just check these off so you can see exactly what's happening. So this is straight out of camera with the conversion light on it. Super simple. We add in our layer for our contrast just to get our tones where we want them to be. Next thing we do, we add in our color. So this is our color right here. Now, essentially what we're doing with the color is same thing, adding cool tones to the shadows, warm tones to the highlights. Next thing we're doing here, another contrast curve just to bring our exposure down just a little bit. I feel like Will's just coming in a little bit too hot. Then our next layer is our six vectors. Now this is where like the color magic comes in. Uh, and what we did to this is we just adjusted this blue. You know, this blue hue, we made it, we wanted, we wanted to complement his skin tone and the outfit a lot better than it was. Not that this is bad, it's just that, that blue color is just whack. You know, we want to change it to more of a teal tone. So what I did was I shifted it to a teal tone and I took out some of that saturation. So that way, you know, wow, really crashed on me. Pain. We just shifted that to more of a teal tone and took out some of the saturation. And then another thing I really wanted to do for the scene is help focus our eye in on wheels as well. The scene's kind of flat with the lighting, but once we add then this focus layer right here, you can see it helps just hone our eye and it just focus in on him in the center of it. Same thing, just a circle layer. And we just, you know, drop the exposure down just a tad bit on this. Now for the studio scene, take y'all through my layers again, just to show you what we did to get to this point. This is what the clip looked like straight out of the camera with the conversion light on it. Next thing we do is we add in our tones. I went a little bit darker with this because like I said, I wanted the glasses to just shine. We want the glasses to pop out on the scene. Uh, and I think I achieved that with that. Next is our color, same philosophy. We went in, we dropped a little bit of blues into the shadows, a little bit of warm tones into the mid tones. And I didn't adjust my highlights on this one because I wanted the studio to still feel white and cool, right? So if I would have adjusted my highlights, it would have went into the floor, which I didn't want. I just wanted to really affect those skin tones. Next thing is a contrast curve, slight mid-tones boost right there. You can see that just brings our skin tones up just a little bit. And then from there, we have our six vectors, which just slightly, slightly adjust our skin tones. I think the skin tones here, they look good, but they just have too much magenta into them. So I just wanted to pop that orange back in there. I think that this is about to cut off, but luckily I'm done. That's the breakdown of this music video. Go check it out. Go drop it a comment. Let Wills know that you checked it out. Uh, if you have any other questions, drop them down in the comment section. If you enjoy content like this, drop this a like. Consider hitting that subscribe button if you're new here to the channel. But with that uh, being said, I'm out, y'all. Peace. Dang, that was perfect. Holy sh... One minute left. Woo! This is a long one. This is a long one.